students let us start with the cutting forces in orthogonal cutting operation see here in the diagram this is the diagram showing you the uh, step turning operation on the cylindrical bar here this part is the machine part this part is the part to be get machine by this tool this is a single point cutting tool and the tool is given feed in this direction and this hatched part or portion showing the surface in a transient that is undergoing machining operation okay so if you look at the diagram we can see here this job or workpiece is rotating in this direction with rpm n the feed is given in millimeter per revolution and you can see here the cutting forces the fc and ft you can see here this ft is resolved in two component one is horizontal component fa and the vertical component fr right so these are the forces in the metal cutting operation so the same thing shown here in a much simplified manner this is our single point cutting tool this is the side cutting edge of the tool or major cutting edge this is the end cutting edge or minor cutting edge and this angle is side cutting edge angle cs and see the force ft is acting perpendicular on this side cutting edge or major cutting edge with angle here cs and that's why it is get resolved into two components one is this f a axial force or longitudinal force and this f r is a radial force that is ft having two components f a and f r now what are these forces let's so f c is our cutting force and this force is also known as the main tangential force whereas ft is our thrust force or this is also called as the vertical force and having two components one is axial force or feed force and another is radial force fa and fr now what are these forces actually see though we are talking about the orthogonal cutting but here the cutting edge of the tool is not perpendicular see here to the velocity vector is it is having angle other than 90 degree so initially we will see the oblique and we can convert it into orthogonal cutting operation okay so this is the actually oblique case so here first component we see that is cutting force so what is this component so it is acting in the vertical plane tangential to the work surface in the direction of cutting velocity vector we see so cutting force is actually the tangential force acting tangentially from the surface or you can say from the tip of the tool to that tip it is acting tangentially in the direction of the speed that is the cutting force that is a major force in the cutting operation now ft is a thrust force and thrust force having two components one is field force and another is radial force out of this field force is what it is a force acting in the horizontal plane parallel to the axis of the work in the direction of tool feed motion see here you can see here see this is acting fa this is a ft and fa is a horizontal component of ft acting in the horizontal plane parallel to the axis of the workpiece or parallel to the feed motion of the tool yes or no whereas the radial force fr it is acting in horizontal plane 
but it is perpendicular to the machined surface along the axis of right so this is the radial force if you look at this f a that is field force is nearly 30 to 60 percent of the cutting force f c so how much f a f a is around 30 to 60 percent of cutting force whereas if you see the radial force is generally 20 to 40 percent of the main tangential force or cutting force and this is the smallest force in the uh, metal cutting zone maximum force is our main tangential force then we are having the axial force then this is the smallest force in the metal cutting okay and the thrust force that is ft is a resultant of this fa and fr so it is acting in the horizontal plane and is perpendicular to the cutting edge as already i discussed it is perpendicular to the major cutting edge of the tool and having two components f and fr so definitely ft will be the resultant of f and fr so ft we can write it as under root of fa square plus ft square this is the resultant r. and the resultant r is actually equal to under root of fc square plus ft square but ft we know that is under root of f a square plus f t square that is why we can write overall this resultant force in the metal cutting operation is equal to under root of f c square plus f a square plus f r square so please remember friends these are the three components of forces in the metal cutting operation anybody ask you the three forces in the metal cutting operation are what then these are the f c f a and f r and this is the oblique cutting. see this is the oblique cutting because the cutting edge is inclined it is not actually 90 degree to the uh, cutting velocity vector if it is like that then it is orthogonal cutting and orthogonal cutting there will be simply two components fc and ft there are no any components of ft so in oblique cutting operation these are the three components in orthogonal cutting operation only two components fc and ft that's why we already seen in the difference between the orthogonal and oblique cutting that this orthogonal turning operation is known as the two-dimensional cutting operation whereas this oblique cutting operation is known as 3D or three-dimensional cutting. Why three-dimensional? These three components. And very important thing that we can convert this oblique cutting operation into the orthogonal cutting operation. Please remember this. So any question, any analysis of this oblique cutting operation we cannot directly carry as it is or we cannot conduct directly first of all we have to convert this oblique cutting into the orthogonal cutting and then go for the analysis so these are the forces so these are the three forces fc fa fr we discussed these are the three components of forces in oblique cutting operation so these are the uh, some points that you have to keep in mind okay so dear friends as we uh, till now we discussed about this fc and ft please remember that this fc and ft are the measurable forces these are the measurable forces which can directly measure by putting the dynamometer uh, beneath the, your tool directly you can measure this fc and ft but there are another forces which are the another forces see here so this is the chip which is sliding over or flowing over the rake phase this is the rake phase of the tool okay this is our shear zone shearing zone where the shear is going to occur along this and see here the chip is sliding over the rake phase of the tool so definitely there will be the friction chip is moving in this direction there is a frictional force opposing this movement of the chip right this is a frictional force along the rake face and now you can see here this is the shear force the shearing is occurring in this zone so in this in this zone the force which is going to induce is the fs fs is what our shear force okay these are the two forces now 
their perpendicular or normal component for this f frictional force is here normal component n perpendicular to f and here normal component of fs is perpendicular to fs is fsn okay so these are the measurable forces please remember this friction force f is for friction force n is for normal force f is for the shear force along the shear plane this fsn is a normal force to this shear force so actually these are the forces which are going to measure in terms of so these are the actual forces dear friends please remember these are the actual forces in the metal cutting and we are measuring these actual forces in terms of the fc and ft which are the measurable forces which can directly measure by placing the dynamometer below the tool we can directly measure these forces so please remember that is a very important relationship exists between all these actual forces these are the four actual forces the frictional normal shear and normal to shear these four forces can be measured in terms of fc and ft how to measure you will see here and this is actually uh, merchant's analysis okay so before going in that details let us first uh, understand about this merchant circle diagram for the cutting forces so now we know very well this is the chip first of all look at here this is the chip this is the tool and this is part of this red part is a workpiece we are not drawn in detail okay now here the thing is that we have seen the forces like in the isometric view but here the tool is see rotated at 90 degree tool is inverted here that's why fc will not come down fc will be what tangential force to the surface of the workpiece undergoing cutting operation so this is the tangential force fc this is the fc okay now shear plane is here this is a shear plane so along the shear which force is there fs we draw an fs this is the rake face no so along the rake face which force will be there so along the rake face of the tool there is a frictional force this is a frictional force okay we draw this then what we have to do so fc for this fc we are having normal force is what our thrust pull this is ft we draw near ft now from fs the normal force to fs is what fsn we draw it normal to this or perpendicular to this and at the same time for this friction force the normal force is see here and we draw so in this fashion how many triangles we are getting here see one two and this three right and if you join this say ob if you join this ob is what the common diagonal for all these triangles all these right angle triangles this r will be a single diagonal and this r is nothing but our resultant force this r is what our resultant force please remember very important this is actually merchant's uh, circle diagram very easy to draw fc perpendicular to that ft along the rake face f f frictional force perpendicular or normal to that normal force along the shear plane shear force perpendicular normal to shear force that is fsn right and join this diagonal common diagonal we will get this as a resultant force a resultant component now let us give the names to the angles which are forming here you know this angle with the cutting velocity vector and the shear plane is our phi okay this angle that is f and n in this diagonal in this triangle oab this oba is angle beta that is friction angle beta beta is what now friction angle because you know tan of angle beta is equal to friction force divided by normal force or f is equal to mu n so here one thing also clear that 
this tan of angle beta is nothing but our coefficient of friction at the tip and tool rake face interface this is the coefficient of friction mu tan of angle beta from the simple friction theorem and we can also have by the simple geometry this angle BOD, BOD angle will be the beta minus alpha. If this is beta, this is 90 minus beta. Okay. And this angle is alpha. This is angle alpha, rake angle alpha. Then this angle will be 90 minus phi. This angle 90 minus phi. This is the opposite angle that will be the alpha. Okay. So from that the simple geometry we can understood the BOD is the beta minus alpha. So how many triangles are here? See here OCB, ODB and OBA or OAB, right? So these are the three uh, triangles and common diagonal. So from this diagram, now see we can get the relationship for every force with an angle phi, angle beta and angle phi plus beta minus alpha because in triangle OCB this angle total angle is phi plus this beta minus alpha. Okay. So if you write the equation we will get C here. Sin beta is equal to F divided by, by R, cos beta is equal to N divided by R, then I can write this sin of phi plus beta minus alpha is equal to Fsn divided by R, cos of phi plus beta minus alpha is equal to Fs, OC is Fs, Fs divided by R, then this in triangle ODB, this angle is beta minus alpha. So, sine of beta minus alpha will get Ft divided by R. Cos of beta minus alpha will get Fc divided by R. So, once you write this equation, let us see. We discuss all these things. That is tan beta will get here the friction angle. Uh, the tan, tan beta is a F by N that is frictional force by normal force. And tan beta is our coefficient of friction. Okay. So, same thing already I mentioned. So this this relation we are going to get. Okay. Now same what I am trying to say that is now the same equation can be written in terms of R is equal to take R to the LHS and we will get R is equal to either F upon sine beta is equal to N divided by cos beta is equal to FT by sine of beta minus alpha is equal to Fc by cos of beta minus alpha or equal to Fsm by sine of phi plus beta minus alpha or is it, it is equal to Fs divided by cos of phi plus beta minus alpha. Okay. Now from above this equation number A what we can write? This sine if I take here and Fc I take at this denominator I will get Fc Ft upon Fc is equal to tan of beta minus alpha. That is tan of beta minus alpha what I will get? Ft divided by Fc. Okay. 